So I want to share with you my technique for double row repair of an upper subscapularis tendon tear using a completeless knotless technique. This is a left shoulder. I'm viewing from a posterior viewing portal. I have a cannula, an 825 threaded cannula in the anterior superlateral portal, which is made just above the biceps tendon. We can look anteriorly. We have simulated a upper subscapularis tear. You can see disruption over to the bicipital groove. So this is a full thickness tear of the upper subscap. This is a type 2 LaFosse tear, a tear that in my mind is a, amenable to a double row repair because it extends over laterally. But we have a limited footprint to work with, so I'm going to show you a relatively bone preserving technique. My first step once I've identified that tear is to place a tagging suture in the biceps tendon. So I'm going to load a suture in the middle of a penetrating device. I'm going to pass through the tendon and I'll drop that loop on the back side and go back and retrieve it. We want to be careful not to incorporate any soft tissue, but by retrieving that loop out the same cannula, we can then pass the free ends through the loop to create a half racking suture. We can see how you can pass those limbs through the loop and we'll alternate tension to bring that half racking suture down to the biceps tendon. Yeah, so alternate tension and that'll cinch the suture down to the tendon. So I'll pull those sutures in line with the tendon and then I'll cut the biceps tendon at the base. We want to cut flush with the glenoid. We're going to preserve the labral insertion but just cut the tendon. Now the tendon's free and we can retrieve that out the ASL portal. Now we have our outside view and we're going to start just distal to where we've marked the tendon. We're going to work distal because we're going to do an onlay technique and this is going to preserve our length tension relationship. So we're going to whip stitch distal and then we're going to end up resecting the proximal 20 to 25 millimeters. I like to make two to three passes and work about two to three centimeters distal. So we're going to resect the proximal portion now. Again, this is the proximal 20 to 25 millimeters and that'll help us maintain our length, length tension relationship. And I've moved to the onlay technique because this really gives me a versatile tenodesis where I can incorporate into a swivel lock for rotator cuff repair techniques such as the one that we're going to show you here. So it's important as you're working here to protect the biceps tendon. One trick you can do to facilitate that is to pull up on the sutures on the outside to protect it and then you can place a snap just adjacent to the skin and that'll prevent the tendon from pulling back into the joint and protect that with the cannula protecting it on the medial aspect. So there you can see our tendon just behind the cannula. So that's going to be safe and out of the way. The next step is we need to open the rotator interval and clear the subcoracoid space so that we can both assess the subcoracoid space and also create a space for placement of our medial anchor. It's easiest, I, in my opinion, to first do this with a cautery and you want to feel for the coracoid anteriorly. Once that space is cleared, we need to then redirect a shaver anterior to the comma tissue. I can then work on clearing the space. I can use a posterior lever push to provide a little more room. And now once I've accessed that space, it's typically advantageous to move to a 70 degree scope because this will provide us a better aerial view and be able to see down the subscapularis tendon more thoroughly. So here we have this 70 degree arthroscope. Now here's our coracoid anteriorly. We can now assess the coracoid humeral interval. We look for a space of seven millimeters or more and in this case it's preserved. So we don't need to do a coracoplasty. If this was less than seven millimeters I would do a coracoplasty taking care to preserve the conjoined tendon anteriorly. So now I'm going to place my medial anchor. I'll use a spinal needle as a guide to determine the adequate angle of approach for my medial anchor. I want to be lateral to the coracoid and just medial to the comma tissue, again preserving this tissue here. Here we have a good angle of approach. We can then insert our guide percutaneously and I'll place that guide just in the medial aspect of the footprint right where we'd want to bring this tendon down anatomically. This is our 2-6 knotless anchor. This has a number 5 coreless suture for our repair. On the outside there you can see we remove the black tab and pull back on the anchor. Pulling back on the blue 
repair stitch of this self-bunching anchor will help deploy the self-bunching mechanism. Through my ASL portal, I'm going to retrieve the blue repair stitch. I've loaded this suture on a scorpion. Typically, I'll use an anagrade pass for my subscapularis tears, particularly on the upper aspect. Again, a little bit of a lever push will help me increase my space, and then we can deploy our suture. And this is a tight space here, so it's helpful to often pull back on the cannula here to clear the jaw of the scorpion. Okay, we have our repair stitch out the ASL cannula. Now we need to retrieve the shuttling stitch. There's two ends of this shuttling suture. This round end is going to have a loop on it. I like to think taking the round to the repair stitch. The tape is going to be the pulling end. So retrieve the round end to take it to the repair. Now we're going to pass this free end of the repair stitch through the loop of the shuttling suture. We want to pull back to the blue mark. That's about a hand breadth if you think of that as well. And this is going to help make sure we have the appropriate length for delivering the suture down into the anchor. Now we're going to pull on the opposite end as you can see being done anteriorly. This is going to deliver the repair stitch down into the anchor. A couple little tugs here will help pull it through, as you can see there. Now we just need to take slack out of the system here. So there we're going to pull the repair stitch down to the anchor. There you can see my medial row is complete. And I'm going to preserve this lateral limb because now I'm going to incorporate this lateral limb into my biceps tenodesis. Now I need to go get those sutures. We'll take the snap off of the biceps tendon and we'll go and retrieve our sutures. I'm first going to re retrieve my repair stitch. I'll look around the comma tissue and I'll take that suture out the ASL portal. So now you can picture when I bring that tenodesis down, this is really going to help close laterally. And I'll get the bicep sutures at the same time. So typically you can retrieve out this portal through the cannula. But if for some reason we can't find the sutures or if it's hung up, we can use another technique where we just put the retriever through the cannula and go and get our bicep sutures. Now through the ASL portal, I'm going to complete my biceps tenodesis and my lateral row for my subscapularis. I'm going to create a bone socket just at the top of the bicepital groove. This bone socket is just the anterior of the supraspinatus tendon, and it's going to represent my lateral insertion for my subscapularis. We'll go down to the second line or SL line for the swivel lock anchor. Then we'll load our sutures from our biceps and our repair stitch from our 2.6 medial anchor through the eyelet of this 475 swivel lock. So we bring the eyelet just down to the top of the bone socket. And the first thing I want to do here is I want to take the slack out from the medial anchor. So we'll pull on that darker blue suture, which is the repair stitch. And there you can see that's really established the lateral aspect of our subscapularis repair. Then we can take the slack out of the two bicep sutures to make sure our biceps tendon is just adjacent to the anchor in this onlay tenodesis. Okay, good. Once all that slack is removed, we'll insert the anchor down to the threads, malleting down just till the threads touch the bone, and then thread our anchor. We'll check the depth of our anchor by backing off from the thumb pad, and you can see we're flush. We can remove the safety stitch and the inserter. And we'll cut our sutures flush with the fiber tape cutter. So here's a look at our final repair. You can see we've reestablished the footprint medially and then use that suture out to our lateral anchor. There's the repair stitch coming around anterior to the comma to create our lateral row knotless repair with simultaneous tenodesis. You can see the biceps tenodesis done in an onlay fashion at the top of groove, restoring the length tension relationship. I really like this technique to get a knotless repair, but also preserving the footprint with these low profile 2-6 anchors and being able to simultaneously perform the biceps tenodesis.